Divorced men of Reddit. What moment with your former wife made me think yup. I'm asking this girl to divorce me? When we went on a family vacation and I hoped she'd sleep the entire time so I could have fun with our son. I was on deployment and she yelled at me for interrupting her family celebration when I called on Christmas. My neighbor's wife screaming putana. Downstairs after she caught my bride and her husband ducking in front of the fireplace. When the cops showed up and arrested me while I was washing dishes. Found out after being taken to the station that she had claimed that I had been beating on her and my 5 year old son. Was acquitted in court a month or so later. The situation was so messed up that the cops actually testified on my behalf. I was working on a mother daughter scrapbook as a Christmas present for her. Was going through her google photos account looking for pics of them together. Came across a selfie she took with some dude laying on her. Confirmed her second affair. Knew it was over the moment I saw it. That has ducked me up pretty good. Besides the narcissism. Random violence and violent outbursts. It was her strange punishments. Her last one doomed her. My crime. I forgot milk on the way home from work so she didn't talk to me. Not one word. For a week. Pure bliss. For a week. When she asked if I was ready to apologize I handed her the divorce papers. Why? Because you rob me of solitude but provide me with no companionship. We were already not speaking. It was Thanksgiving. I knew she wasn't going to bother. But I made a turkey and whatever goes with turkey for my then 8 year old daughter. I had the turkey out on the counter to rest after roasting. My beloved bride walked in. Calmly threw the turkey in the kitchen trash can. And walked out. I had to take my kid to ducking golden corral for Thanksgiving. That was it. I was done. When a friend's wife said to me you know your wife is sleeping with my husband. When she staged a robbery of our house so she could pawn all of my it for drug money. When she said, you didn't pray hard enough and that's why our son has cancer. That's why I'm sleeping with my prayer partner. When she physically attacked me in front of our then 11 yo son. I'd been pondering the idea for a while. That was the clincher. Full stop. Finding her. On Christmas Eve Eve. Still sexting a co-worker whom she claimed she was no longer in contact with. Having been bastard sexting him previously. Also. I cleared out of there like a blackjack dealer. Her. I can't live in this house anymore. It's not in a major city. Me. We're less than an hour away from one. Also. I inherited this house. It costs me nothing but upkeep. Also. I pay every bill. You work 6 hours a week and have one class. Where do you get off demanding anything? Her. Buy me a new house or we're done. Me. Get the duck out of my house. I used to love to do chores for her because she loved being taken care of. When she stopped noticing. It started hurting. Then one day I made a bench for our entryway out of Barnwood. Took about 40 hours of work. She walked in the house after work that day and sat her purse on it and proceeded to start the fight where she told me that she was mad she got married to me. She stormed out of the house grabbing her purse. Never noticed the bench was there. I knew then but I think she already knew. Our daughter at 3 years old told us to stop yelling. When I found evidence of the last affair, as soon as I heard it, I knew that was the end. And there would never be anything else there. She required a much more varied selection of deeds than I was able to provide. So she went out and acquired them herself while I was stationed overseas in the Air Force. When I found the letter between her and my friend about their affair and how she couldn't wait to be away from me so they could be together. Yup. I knew then. That it was time to get that divorce. I left for work at 6am and forgot to unplug the toaster. When I arrived home at 6pm. I was given the everything you've ever done to piss me off speech just for leaving the toaster plugged in. I asked her what she did all day that prevented her from unplugging it herself. Another I'm an asshole speech. I said something to the effect of quit acting like your ducking mother. She threw the cat at me. A cat. She threw a ducking cat at me. Edit words and such. Edit to scuba Steve went on to live with me after the official separation and divorce. When my stepdaughter became a teenager, my ex ramped up the nutso. She had always been an impatient, angry screamer of a parent. 
but as my stepdaughter became a young woman. My ex just went crazy with envy or something. I know lots of moms have a hard time with teenage daughters. But their base level patience is so much better than my ex's was. Threats of cutting hair in middle of night while daughter slept. Pearling hair. Slapping face. Ridiculing in front of her friends. Swinging something that missed and put a hole in the wall. I was out. With the kids. My wife was around less and less. Had to be free to live her life. Go out with her friends. More often than not she would call me to pick our daughter up from daycare. After promising to pick her up and have some girl time. Just tell her I'm working late or not feeling well. She always had something better to do and the kids were old enough to know better. I went to pick our daughter up one day. When they called her name she came running over until she saw it wasn't mom. Again. Slumped her shoulders and slowly walked over to ask what's her excuse this time. That was the breaking point. Told her to get out. Even helped pay her security deposit to get her out. When I realized I didn't get along very well with her boyfriend. The day she did take off work to help me go through a dumpster. I had accidentally thrown my keys in the trash while cleaning out my car. Edit. Itch didn't even return my call. After reading the what moment did you know you would marry your wife thread. What a beautiful world full of love we live in. After reading this thread. Oh right. The things some people can do to the ones they are supposed to love. For the first one, I was working late and the daycare calls and ask if I'm picking up my kids. Left work to go get them. When I got home she was gone. Didn't hear anything from her for two weeks. For the second one, the third time I bailed the house out of foreclosure because she wouldn't pay the bills. Even though there was money in the accounts to cover it. I closed the account. Handed her cash for the mortgage pack to bag my kids and left. When I, as the only earner in the house, was denied buying a new pair of work boots in December because she needed the money to buy vaccines for the puppies. She bred dogs as a hobby. I was a framing carpenter in Ohio. My current work boots were toast holes in both. No soles. I needed them. Her puppy vaccine story with bullet her hobby was dogs. But she was a pro at popping pills. That's what she needed the money for. I was done with her by March. There were many reasons but this was the final straw. My grandmother was on her deathbed. My ex took this time to throw a childish fit because I ordered food that she didn't like. I realized at that point how completely miserable I was and how ducking short life is. So we divorced. She took all my money and my kids, plus child support. I've still never been happier and every time I have to interact with her is blows my mind that we made it 9 years. I guess when we were together I was so trained to comply and overlook. I now see what an absolute toxic bully she is was. During the last year and a half of our marriage she became extremely psychologically abusive. She was a narcissist. Controlled my every move. Would isolate me. Refused physical contact. I was just an extension to her life. Was not allowed to talk to any female. Was not allowed to hang out with any friends or she would ignore me for up to 5 days at a time. Double standards everywhere. Verbal abuse and the list can continue but it hurts to think about. The last straw for me was when she threatened to kill me because I came home from work late even though she knew I would be home late. It was just a little too late for her and she also threatened to hit me the same day. This was the second time this happened and I talked with several people at work about it and they suggested that I run. I had texts of the threats on my phone and contacted a lawyer that same week. She agreed to sign since I told her I would take severe legal action if she didn't. Thankfully no children and it was a clean divorce and I'm happily divorced. When my buddies approached me to complain that she kept sitting on their laps. Wiggling. And hoping for an erection. The morning I saw a picture of some dudes D on her phone. She was classy enough to bring him to the divorce proceedings. I think I'm in the process of realizing it's time to call it a day. I love her but we seem to have vastly different ideas on the best way to live. I.e. money. Lifestyles. And it's thoroughly disheartening being the one trying to make an effort all the time. It sucks. She let me know she was pregnant and wanted my permission to tell all her girlfriends during a girl's night out. Since I knew there was no possible way it was my child. She was also unknowingly admitting to having an affair. I can't math. And she can't. 
It was with her boss. Lawyered up the next day. And he ate her alive in court. I got primary custody of our child we already had. And child support. And a sheriff's notice that she had to vacate my home in 30 days. I never knew she could be that stupid. When she falsely told our marriage counselor that I punched her. The next week. She denied saying it and accused our counselor of lying. He gave me a you should leave this relationship look. I took that look as permission from a professional that I definitely wasn't making the wrong decision. Got divorced and never looked back. I legitimately feared for my safety towards the end. Not that she would hurt me. But that she would make a false accusation to the cops or a crazy friend. Edit. Shortened the story. That would be the moment I walked in from work to find my wife sitting at the kitchen table crying and our two children, five and two at the time, nowhere to be found. I immediately thought something had happened to the kids. When I asked what was wrong, where are the kids? She said they are fine. They are upstairs playing. I just realized that when we die the kids and I are all going to be in heaven and you won't be there with us. Context. We were both raised in religious families but throughout college neither of us practiced at all. After college I began migrating toward my ultimate destination as an atheist. She found God and was reborn. Not me, but one of my best friends. Got his permission to post. He got a pretty substantial year end bonus from work. He decided to use most of it for his wife's Christmas gift and pay off her remaining student loans. Dollar sign 14,700, and the remaining portion to buy a new computer chair for when he gamed. Dollar sign 300. Christmas morning, he was nice enough to let me stay at his place when I traveled for work as he lived 20 minutes from the airport. We all woke up and had breakfast. His family and her parents came over and we started exchanging gifts, besides paying off her loans. He had gotten her a few times items. She opened the card saying her loans were paid off she just sat there for a minute. After the silence, and assuming she was kinda in shock, she asked did you seriously not get me anything else? I bought you that stupid keyboard, the wrong one btw, and you only got me a few things? At that point, his brother-in-law and myself decided to go hang out in another room for a while they ended up getting into a huge fight. A day later when he was dropping me off at the airport he told me that he was going to visit a lawyer and get a divorce. I don't know why I thought these would be funny. This it is depressing as duck. My ex-wife made a lasagna and put little chopped green peppers in it. Who the duck does that? That is not okay. For my step dad, when he found her calculations about how much she would get in child support and alimony in a divorce. She wasn't home at the time. He had the locks changed on his doors first thing, then shut her out of their shared accounts. Not divorced yet, haven't fully decided it's time, but I think it's close. And my straw was when, during one of her every 3 month epic meltdowns, she said, I fantasize about you just finding another girl and sleeping with her so I'll know it's over. It would be the worst thing you could ever do to me. When she asks me to take the kids on some errands. Has kept me celibate for months saying she is asexual now. And once I leave invites some guy over to tongue lash her for 45 minutes and then drop a load inside her in the bedroom without a condom. All on the day before father's day. Thanks Amy. Not divorced yet. This happened last week. Her life is in such shambles I am not even mad. After all the arguments. Yelling at each other and talking in cross purposes we were looking at each other and she says to me. I know that you are going to divorce me because of this but I really hate you. It was the first time in a long time that I completely understood her and what she was trying to express to me. My daughter was 3 at the time and over the years she said she wanted me back but I would say. All you have to do is apologize for what you said. She never would. That's how I knew she didn't love me. When. After being in Afghanistan for 8 months, May 2002 November 2002, she was missing, had my car, finding two random women with kids and pets living in the apartment I paid for, the electricity cut off, no money in my bank account, a pay advance authorized by my commander, and a friend telling me to go easy on her because she was 5 months pregnant with his kid, oh. And he had had heart surgery to remove some kind of cysts from his heart just before I left. He was 23, had a pacemaker, and basically half a heart. 
If I scared him, he could die. I'd say that was the moment. When she started ducking the neighbor. Months of Nosix. Secretly seeing someone as a friend at her night job. Going to stay the night at his house over the weekend. And finally. Finding her saying she loves him in an instant messenger text. Also. Forgetting my fine birthday. This was less than 90 days in. My son was watching Netflix on her phone with me and her boyfriend text her. It was 12 at night and he said he missed her and couldn't wait to see her again. Typical. I know. I confronted her and she denied and said that her friend's daughter was texting my son. My son is 3. The daughter in question was 2 and barely speaking. Yay. That was time to go. I caught my wife being unfaithful. Even though we had a very active a 6 life. We had 6 5-7 times a week. That was it. Once a cheater always a cheater. I filed a week later. There are no second chances when it comes to infidelity in my book. It is one act that shows the most blatant disregard for your spouse. If you are gonna cheat. Then grow a pair and tell your spouse first. Or get ducked. Went to my grandpa's funeral. Disneyland after the service. Flights and board were paid for by my father. She was the most ungrateful and supportive whiny itch the whole weekend I couldn't believe it. My little sister said my entire family didn't like her or her attitude and was constantly asking why she was there. That really sank in and at that moment I knew we were done. Don't keep her around if your family can't stand her. They probably don't like her for good reason. Wife asked me to defrost the freezer because of ice buildup. I said okay. Was on it immediately. Turned on the kettle and filled a few pots with near boiling water and placed them inside. She was too impatient. Pushed me aside and then proceeded to grab the longest, sharpest knife from the drawer and starts chipping at the ice in the freezer. 30 seconds later his sounds coming from the freezer as all the Freon escapes. Made Emmy buy a new freezer because I made her nervous by taking so long and that is why she punctured the freezer. This woman was impatient about everything and her impatience ruined everything. She started working at a job with people that were closer to her age, 25-30, instead of a job where her co-workers were in their late 40s, early 50s. She wanted to go out and hang out with them rather than come home and be with her family, myself and our at the time 2 year old daughter and a godforsaken cat that she just had to have. There were a lot of other little things that added up over time. Mainly her desire to drink and drive, without our daughter in the car thankfully, and 4 days a week of not coming home until 2 or 3 in the morning and not telling a soul where she was or what she was doing. After a month of that, she said she wanted a divorce. I fought it with everything I had for 3 months. Decided to go to counseling, where the counselor asked her ex-wife, in your mind in this marriage already over? After a literal 5 minute silence, I had the answer I needed. Separated a week later and divorced a year later. We're still civil for our daughter's sake. But I will say that after the initial shock of actually going through a divorce after us both proclaiming to do whatever it takes and never getting a divorce. I will say I'm much happier now. I was able to save up and buy a house for my daughter and I. Which I never would have been able to do had I stayed married. In marriage counseling. Me. I love you. X. I settled on you. I was working 6-7 days a week 10-12 hours a day and she called me lazy. She screaming in my face and telling me I was a bad father as she demolished my son's room. Goodbye. When she decided our dog was annoying her and sold him on Craigslist, which she then used the money to buy herself a non-refundable purse, instead of making any mention of her feelings so we could come up with a solution. She said these words, you need to take a shower before you get into bed. You've been playing basketball with all those black guys. She was always mean to waitresses, flight attendants, maids, thinking she was better than them. Our black people? Duck that. I'm out. When she posted on Facebook about an argument we had, and her friends gave her advice on how to get back at me, including but not limited to poisoning me, hitting me in the face while I'm asleep, and cutting my brake lines. All of these comments were met with laughter and images on her part. Saturday before Easter of this year she came at me with her desire to go to Germany and see friends that would pay for her round trip there and back. We got into an argument about it. I voiced my suspicion that something more was going on. 
we didn't speak Sunday. Then Monday rolls around and she tells me she's done. So I get home early, look around on her laptop and find chats between her and her German girlfriend. I invade her privacy because she had cheated before. She had been planning on divorcing me since November last year. So I call her at work and tell her to pack her it and get out. I feel so much better not having the trust issues with her but this whole ordeal is wreaking havoc on my three children. As a woman going through a divorce right now, this thread makes me sad but is forcing me to have some self reflection in order to prevent it from happening again, comma. That being said, my stbxh told me that he knew he had to leave because he just couldn't stop himself from messaging all those girls he would meet online. And he knew he was going to cheat on me physically very, very soon. That's a direct quote. We had been having sex at least three times a week. I had been initiating. The last time we slept together was the day before he left. And he asked me not to leave visible scratches on his back and said it wasn't attractive that I got so into it. So I'm guessing his reason was he found me repulsive. He never said that to me directly. Edit. I cannot take credit for introducing many of you to the acronym STBXH. So I encourage you to thank our Reddit friend Jehovah Coin with some likes for explaining it. I actually got a huge laugh out of it. P. When she mocked me about being sexually abused when I was 5. Yet. I'm still here like the ducking idiot I am. We were at Wendy's with our three kids. My intestines. For whatever reason. Were ready to purge. I said I was going to the bathroom with urgency and she insisted. Despite my protests of urgency. That I take one of the three kids with me to the bathroom because she didn't want to sit with all three. I held my three year old in my arms while my bowels exploded. And I realized then that it was over. We flew across the country for her sister's wedding. She didn't say a word to me the entire time since we had parked at the airport. Once we landed at our destination, we walked a baggage claim, absolute silence preceding for several hours now, at the carousel. I picked up a bag when she took it out of my hand and calmly stated, none of my family knows you're here. I told them I came alone. She walked out of the airport and left me there. Narcissistic personality disorder made for some really fun scenarios.